This is the all-new Community Connection. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. Well, Ferguson, of course, was the epicenter of attention, but then coincidentally, a movement for change, for review, for opportunity, not only in our region, but around the nation. Well, our youth now have a voice and opportunity with a youth newspaper called the Ferguson Phoenix. It will be headed up and founded by our beloved Robin Boyce. Robin, thanks for being here today. Oh, Jay, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, I am too excited and couldn't wait to get you in here to talk about this paper. How relevant and key is this right now? It is really key because Of course, you know, with everything that's happened within the last year or so and in Ferguson, at Ferguson, about Ferguson, not only here in the St. Louis area region, but around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had some reporters that came in here in 2014, saw what was going on and said, "Okay, there's something that's missing here outside of all the other things that are going on. Ferguson's youth need to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And at about the same time. The library and, well, who heads up the Ferguson Public Library out there felt the same way. His name is Scott Bonner. Good guy. Mm -hmm. In fact, the library under Scott Bonner's leadership was the only thing that stayed open during the actual riots that were going on and the unrest. It was a place of rest and peace for people Mm -hmm. to go to reporters, people in the community. The kids had that place to go to. Yeah. Right. The uh, people had a place to go to regroup, pull together, you know, juice up their phones and their computers and everything and get stories nice. out and and organizers had the opportunity to come in and reorganize mm-hmm. and get whatever they needed to get together to get back out there oh, and wow. on the lines. I mean, it was a common place for people to come together in a peaceful place. And that's the way Scott saw the library. And then he also got a, a lot of clergy teachers, other folks, because remember in 2014, when everything blew up, mm-hmm. school was getting started. Yep. And at that point, they had to cancel out on school for a few weeks before things kind of quieted down. So Ferguson Library was there and available under Scott's leadership to make it happen. But at this time, there was a group that came in of freelance photographers. And one of them works for an organization or is executive director for an organization called the Community Reporting Alliance Mm -hmm. out of New York. Okay. Actually, Chester, New York. And so Gary uh, Pierre Pierre is his name put out a call to the Black Journalists Organization here in St. Louis, Greater St. Louis Association of Black Journalists, which I'm a member of, and said that he's looking for a director to run a youth-led newspaper in Ferguson. Wow. So I just put my stuff in. I, you know, I, had a, <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. always trying to keep my feet in the business. And he called. They interviewed me and they hired me. And oh, I'm sure. like, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So I had had this wonderful opportunity to put together this great little newspaper meeting with the folks over at the Ferguson Library who are allowing us, the, giving us the space and computers nice. for the young people to produce this newspaper. We're looking for young people between the ages of 12 to 18 years old, mm-hmm. middle school and high school students looking for kids. Really, we'd like to get some kids on board from the Ferguson Florissant School District. Right. But I've got a lot of kids who are joining up from Hazelwood, mm-hmm. from Riverview Gardens. From all over. I mean, and these are some sharp babies. <laughs> and they love writing and they're excited. Right. But I need some more kids. And I know that there are a lot of young people out there who want to join. Now, we went back and forth, kind of what we would name it. I even talked with the kids about the name. And I just came up with the Ferguson Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. had the kids research the Phoenix. Yeah. I said, I want you to look at the, what this Phoenix is first before we make a decision on whether or not this is what we're going to name the paper. Right. And of course, they learned that it was a mythical bird that in mythology, in Greek mythology, uh, this bird rose from the ashes, yeah. as Ferguson did, yeah. and is now strong and moving forward with reference to cleaning some things up. And this bird went out and was kind of the reconnaissance bird for the generals and the soldiers in mythology time and would come back and disseminate information. So how better, you know, appropriate, you know, how better appropriate. Piece. <laughs> so, so good. So many key components to this, yeah. you know, also with the library yeah. hosting the space and they have access to the research and yes. reference materials. Yes. A great home base to oh. be able to start with a, a solid foundation, yes. you know, to give them the strength to kind of go from there because, 
confidence to speak and to use your voice is a whole nother thing than having a voice. And then also for you to have been the lady selected. Yeah. Now, what made you sign up, Robin? What made me sign up? You've got up? an extensive, yeah, to put your hat in. You know, you've got I, the, <laughs> a, an extensive experience and yeah. career yeah. seasoned vet yes you have always loved and been committed to community but what about this project this the project in? is probably the second legacy wow. the first legacy was of course the magic 108 mm-hmm. peer panel as you know yep a lot of people know that was a group started by which is now z1077 with uh, these gracious stations that have allowed me to come on and talk with this company iheart farming clear channel but the Magic 108 Peer Panel was a group of young people that was the, the beginning of, oh, let's teach some kids how to become community leaders and, yeah, let's use radio to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So out of that, and that was over 20 and some odd worked. years ago, it worked. It worked because a few of those, <laughs> let's just name it. We have a couple of minutes on that peer panel yeah. to come out and be community leaders. We have Mike McMillan, who okay. is now president of the Urban League, Better Family Life's James Clark. James Clark. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got Itefi Yamani, who's a head counselor over at um, Cardinal Ritter Prep. You've got Kevin Bryant, who owns a mega business right now mm-hmm. uh, in graphic arts. And I remember that kid coming into the studio on Sundays when we had the peer panel on with his sketch pad, just sketching yeah. and talking about this dream that he had. And look where he is right yeah. now. Yeah. Naeem yeah. Gray, who is over there with Better Family Life, helping people get into homes and, and getting it together. I mean, oh, my God, really great folks, young people mm-hmm. who are doing the thing. And Johanna, so who's to, over. Yes, who Johanna heads Wharton. Up the, uh, yeah, Johanna Wharton, who heads up the Jackie um, Joyner Kersey mm-hmm. uh, Foundation right now. Great babies. I mean, I could go on and on and on about some of these sharp young people who have who came out of that group. So mm-hmm. this, the this Ferguson is. Phoenix, mm-hmm. is the next piece of legacy before retirement. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be allowed for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know you, oh, you've said well, it a few times, well, but I just yeah. don't know that we will be able to give you that. <laughs> I, I will take, you know, <laughs> you know, I love what I do. I mm-hmm. love teaching. And I, I probably should have gone to school and gotten the total credentials in, in teaching. But the journalism has always been that bug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Radio has been the deep bug. <laughs> and just really communicating to people and really helping people see, be able to act, you know, really um, bring people to a call to action. Like the Ferguson Phoenix will be for our young people. Mm-hmm. You know, I like for anybody and that the parents, the adults are so excited about this little paper. Oh, yes. I mean, if uh, people will call 314-521-4820. That's the Ferguson Public Library. And as for Amy, specifically ask for Amy because mm-hmm. she's. The The director of, um, yeah, well, she's the director of uh, activities for youth there at the library. But give her a call. That's 521-4820. That's 314. And really, you know, uh, sign up. Get your kids signed Mm -hmm. up. You sign up, young person. If you're interested in being part of it, we're looking for writers. We got one young man who's just taking on the sports. He loves it. Great. great. Write his kids. He loves writing. Mm -hmm. And he sees the advantage of taking this on because he could use this toward getting into, you know, he's not even in high school yet. He's in in junior Mm -hmm. uh, high school and he's looking to go to a prestigious high school here locally. But he knows he could use this byline, this newspaper to really get those scholarships to that high school he wants to go to. Mm-hmm. So, so you say children uh, ages 12 to 18, yes. are these, if they have an interest, do you need them to have any former experience already? No, they do not have to have any former experience. What I'm taking the youth through right now, some training, they're learning the who, what, when, where, how, and why of a story sure. that we've just gone over what it takes to put together a lead. And I mean, a really sharp lead after you do the headline, that's fine. But then when we got to get into that ABC of it all, that outline for the rest of the story, and we've gone through open-ended questions. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? What's a closed question? Mm-hmm. What kind of questions do you need to ask folks? And they're on their first assignment. That's exciting so, training so, that right. can happen. But mm-hmm. what's more is that these will bring true stories and perspectives of yes. our young people, which is, yes. has been so lacking, and I think, in understanding in what we've been looking for here in our region. Mm-hmm. What are some of the eligibility requirements or some of the things that you will be expecting of the students that sign up or that get accepted into the program? What I expect is students who sign up or get into the program, they just need to have a desire and a passion to want to write. 
uh, whether they're poets, whether they want to write poetry, whether they're musicians and they want to do stories on entertainment and what's going on, not only in Ferguson, but in the region. Those who are interested in coming in and learning how to run a newspaper, because not only do we write for this newspaper, we have to run it mm-hmm. like a business. Mm-hmm. We have to go out and get ads. We so that we can continue to produce it. Community Reporting Alliance is being gracious enough to start us up as a business uh, or as a newspaper. But we've got to pay the printer. So we've got to go out and get the ads. They're going to learn how to produce that. They're going to learn how to produce the ads. They're going to learn how to go out and talk to advertisers, potential advertisers, put together proposals. They're going to go in and sit down with the Emerson Electrics, mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. Shop and Saves, what with the Walgreens folks. folks They're going to learn in. how to set up distribution. Mm-hmm. Where How do we distribute this? There's one thing one of the kids, well, how do we get this out, Miss Boys? <laughs> so I'm like, well, we're going to actually sit down and talk with the folks who own these different businesses and ask them, can we we put our newspaper in mm-hmm. your store mm-hmm. so people can pick them up. So, I mean, they have several different little areas where they can go. People can pick this little freebie up. And I mean, they're they're excited. They're like, wow, it's, we get a chance to do this. So and this is an amazing they, opportunity. And they get paid. The kids and get they paid. get paid. Yeah, they get paid. This is something that typically has been unprecedented, and which is why we often see there being some issues and things that are needed because they don't have the access and opportunity. No opportunity. And this is a great opportunity. Did Viola were, Davis say that yes. the other day she when said she the won the Emmy? The only difference, yes, she did. The only difference between me and another actress is not my color, but my opportunity. It's opportunity. Then we want to see that happen for our youth here in Ferguson, learning how to cover, write, and publish, run their own newspaper and use their voice sponsored by Gordon. the Community Reporting Alliance out of New York City. And they will be working out of the Ferguson Municipal Public Library. There will be a schedule. And they will work on Saturdays and Mondays, uh, after school on Mondays from 4 to 6. And yes. then Saturday afternoons from 2 to 4. Not too much. But they will get all of the necessary training to do this tremendous project. But these things will be able to carry with them for the rest of their lives. Yes, they will. I mean, they really didn't understand. Yeah, after I put the lead together in the story, I actually got to go interview somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. one kid's doing, uh, she wants to be the social media queen. Okay. So she wants to do Great. the columns and everything on social media, how to stay safe, what's a good social media site to go to, blah, 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 blah. Another Love kid, it. sports person. Another kid wants to do entertainment. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yeah, let's put all this stuff together and do your research. But in the end, you got to go talk to mm-hmm. an expert and give attribution to that expert and are that information you got. And they're going, wow, we Right. right. This is what it's you have real. to do mm-hmm. to become an excellent journalist. That's and that's right. what I want these babies to And learn. what great professional training, which will give them hope and a chance. Yes. And gives us a way to support. Oh, my goodness. So you definitely, definitely want to support the Ferguson Phoenix. Look for it hitting the newsstands. Coming here real soon. Robin Boyce, director of the Ferguson Phoenix. Thank you, Robin. Thank you so much, I love much, having Jay. you here. Again, for more information, call 314-521-4820 and ask for Amy. Yes. Uh, or email Phoenix Ferguson the number nine at gmail.com that's phoenix ferguson number nine at gmail.com they now have a voice young people if you're between the ages of 12 to 18 years old and have an interest in writing sign up today for the ferguson phoenix a youth-led newspaper getting started in ferguson and will be scheduled for release here very shortly but they need you to cover the news properly put together opinion pieces on topics of current interest Get training on what's responsible reporting and how you can edit and write copy properly. Get training on what strong ethics and morals and journalism are all about. And this is your opportunity to take flight with the Phoenix. Call 314-521-4820. 314-521-4820 and ask for Amy or email Phoenix Ferguson number nine at gmail.com. That's Phoenix Ferguson number nine at gmail.com. All right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcast at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search Community Connection with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.